All right, let's talk about race. Let's talk about race. Very sensitive topic. A very delicate topic. I already have two copyright strikes on my channel, uh, so I'm going to try not to be overly worried about what I say, but I also have to be conscious of the things that I say because YouTube is looking for any excuse just to wipe me off the face of the planet, which really wouldn't be the worst thing anyway, because I don't have a large platform. I'm essentially a nobody, so it really doesn't matter, but I don't want to, I don't want to poke the bear, so to speak. But let's talk about race for a moment. And keep in mind, I want you to keep this statement in mind. Blackness is not inferior. Okay, now you could substitute the word blackness with any other race of people who are not white. Okay, um, being Asian is not inferior. Okay, being uh, or whatever brand of Asian, brand, right? Whatever type of Asian, whatever, being Hispanic is not inferior. And what I want you to do is for a moment, I well, for the sake of this conversation, this one-way conversation rather, what I want you to do is I want you to pretend that you are not who you are. I know that may be difficult for some people, but that's what I want you to try to do. For the sake of this video, this conversation, I want you to pretend that you, if you live in America, I want you to pretend that you're not American. If you live in uh, anywhere else, any other country, I want you to pretend that you are not that country. What I want you to pretend is I want you to pretend that you are the entire world. I want you to pretend that you are every single country. That is the kind of social uh, perspective, social view, social construct, uh, social perspective. That's the kind of social perspective that I want you to have. I want you to have a global social perspective. It's going to relate to a more specific social perception as, as it relates to your individual country. But what I want you to do is I want to, you to imagine that you are the entire world, okay? Generally speaking, and we're going to use those, those four, what, what, what I may consider the big four, big four races on the planet, whites, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, not necessarily in that order, but we're, I guess we'll keep it in that order. If we're being honest, if we're being honest, which race? generally is considered the most attractive the most the least threatening and carries the most privilege is a, is a heavy word because everyone debates privilege what is privilege what is that i think it's a very simple concept but a lot of people as human beings we have a really bad habit of overcomplicating simple things Okay, but I'm going to use the word privilege here, meaning privilege, meaning the ease in which you can move through the world and ascend through the world. Okay, meaning that it may be easier because of the way that you look, because of where you're from, it may be easier for you to get certain privileges or, or get access to certain things in society. It may be easier for you to do that, and it may be easier to move throughout society than other people. As a whole, as a whole, which race out of those big four would you say that the world generally considers the most attractive, the least threatening, and the most privileged? Wh which four? Now, this is not a, a loaded question. This is not heated. I'm not coming, I'm not starting this conversation from a place of anger or from a place of discontentment or, uh, uh, you know, rage, whatever. I'm very calm. I try to, I'm trying to be pragmatic, logical, however you want to say it. I'm just having a conversation. Okay. Out of those big four, if you're honest, and again, I want you to pretend that you are the entire world. Okay. So that's the social perspective that I want you to have. Which race out of those big four would you say carries those, those, those three titles, those three medals, most attractive, least threatening, um, most privileged. If you said any race 
other than white. I don't know what's going on in your head. Most of you, if you're honest, are going to say the white race. You're going to say white people, Caucasian people, people who exhibit a common European physical features. Okay, if you want to go extreme, you know, you can just lump that in blonde hair, blue eyes, fair, white skin, right? If you want to go like to that extreme, of course, white people come in various shades and whatnot. But if you want to keep it to that extreme, you can, okay? And the reason why it may be, it's valid to use that extreme when you're talking about white people and race relations is because whiteness and the 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 worship of whiteness the desire for whiteness has ex has a, has extensive history extensive history has history in asian countries has history in america has history in in africa so the reason why that may be relevant, and honestly why it is relevant, I use the word may because I'm factoring in other people who may not think the way that I do, but to me, the reason why that is relevant is because many people around the world, regardless of the culture that you're in, view lighter skin and less harsh features, fairer hair, silky smooth hair, hair that you don't have to do anything to in order to create a, a specific aesthetic that most that many people you could argue most people find more pleasing than others for whatever reason Asians love whiteness many black people love whiteness to myself too to an extent I would be lying if I told you otherwise. Uh, basically, any culture around the world where there are women, you're going to find that the women who, generally speaking, who are fairer in complexion, who have less kinky hair, right, less harsh hair, you're going to find that those women, regardless of their body type, because, you know, I would argue personally that most men don't want to, don't find sticks sexually attractive, or at least not as sexually attractive as bodacious women, uh, voluptuous women. Okay. We all kind of want big, big booty, big titties, you know, to, 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 a, <laughs> to a degree, <laughs> obviously. I mean, it's going to vary based off, uh, it's going to vary depending on the man, but generally speaking, we like fullness in women. We, we find generally speaking, I would argue that most men don't want to be with twigs. Okay. But, and to go further on that point, the men who have those looks, fair complexion, fairer hair, they generally, by many women around the world, are deemed to be more attractive, less threatening, and more pri privileged, which is why many women around the world, regardless of the culture that they, that they exist in, many women find those men um, more attractive options than other races. Regardless of whether or not that, that is a majority uh, uh, or... My point is that it's prevalent throughout the world. It's not unique to America. It's not unique to Europe. It's not unique to Asia. So if we're going to say that white people in general, generally speaking, hold the medals of being the most attractive from a global perspective, most attractive, least threatening, most privileged, what also may come from having those, what also may come from 
carrying those titles. Respect. Now that's a layered thing as well. It's not a very, that's a layered thing as well. Because respect isn't necessarily earned by the way that you look. Respect is earned based on the way that you behave, in the long run anyway, in the long run. In the short term, yes, you can be respected because of the way that you look. You know, you can see somebody and based on their general aesthetic, you can build some kind of, and depending on the social programming that you have that might inspire you to develop a certain type of respect for that person based primarily on the way that they look. But over time, in the long run, what happens is that the mind understands clearly that truly respecting someone, developing true respect for someone is done by evaluating their character and not the way that they look. Looks in the long run are irrelevant. So then if we're, if we're talking, if on this scale, I argue that white people are generally the most attractive, the most privileged, the least threatening, and the most respected. Who do you think take, if we're using the big four races, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, how do you think the other three are measured on that scale? If we're being honest, again, this is not a hateful discussion. This is not a discussion meant to bring anybody down. What I'm doing is I'm simply I'm having a conversation, and and I'm trying to have an honest one. How do you think, how would you rate the other three races on that scale? If white people are generally, throughout the world, given the most respect and navigate most of the places, most of the most influential places of power, how do the other three races land on that scale as far as respect is concerned and attractiveness this one again i have not looked up statistics for this i don't have numbers to back any of this up this is just based on my anecdotal understanding and what i have seen of the world and what i have what i have observed from the world from my 30 plus years of life okay so i may get things off i may be off the mark in some respect I accept that. I don't know everything. Okay? And I'm not perfect in regards to the way that I view race. I do have certain um, biases and I do have harmful things that I've allowed to remain in my head. Okay? So I accept that as well and I admit that. I admit that. I do. But I, I try my best to be honest. I try my best. To be honest, I do, because that's important too. Because being honest about the world helps you to be honest about yourself. Regardless of whether or not you want to change the person that you are, regardless of whether or not you want to change the individual that you have become, developing a habit of being honest, and even if that honesty is something that hurts you, being brutally honest about the world that you live in helps you to be honest about yourself and where you belong in the world and what you believe and what you're willing to fight for and die for and possibly how you should change in order to make your life better and the lives of everyone around you better the world would be a much better place if all of us did our best to take into account how our actions affected other people. And it's difficult. It's not easy. Especially when you live in a world where selfishness is prized, where your results matter more than anybody else's. Nobody else's journey matters more than your own. Nobody else's experiences matter more than your own. Get yours while you can get it. Screw anybody else. It's very difficult to live life in a way It's very difficult to live a selfless life when everything that you see promotes aggressive selfishness. Excuse me. Excuse me again. Two burps in a row. (laughs) 
but that might be that might be um that might that not might that might not relate directly to the point i kind of i i i digress as i often do i guess my point this is very long winded i know i'm long winded i know i like to talk a lot and sometimes i don't <clears throat> my i don't sometimes i know i don't make my point the way that i want to because sometimes I say things that don't really make sense to anybody else but me. <laughs> but um, how I, and how I think most people would if they were honest, how I would rate the remaining three races underneath white people. The Asians and Hispanics, you could, um, you could interchange them, I suppose depending on your own biases. I would put Asians directly below white people. That might confuse a lot of people, you know, especially a lot of Asian people who who have found their generations, their ancestors prosecuted and discriminated against by whites or by other races or by even themselves. I still probably would put Asians below white people and then Hispanics below Asians, although they can be interchanged. And of course, you, you know, there's also, you know, Jews and, and the like. They belong in, in, on the, the scale as well. But at the bottom of that totem pole, of that societal respect totem pole, I would not hesitate to put blacks at the bottom of that totem pole. I don't say that with pride. I don't say th saying that does not make me feel good. I don't gain some kind of strength or some great courage or, or, or puff my chest out as I say that, in my opinion, black people are the deemed, generally speaking, because again, we're pretending that we have a global consciousness right now. We have a global societal perspective. It does not make me happy to say that, in my opinion, blacks, regardless of where they're from, and myself, I'm included in that, that we are generally deemed the least respected, the least attractive, the most threatening, and the least privileged. Generally speaking, of course, arguments can be made all over the place for anybody else, but from my own experience and from what I have observed of the world, if we're talking about the big four races, that's how I would list that totem pole. Whites, Hispanics, and Asians, and unfortunately, at the bottom, your race, if you happen to be black, my race, since I am part black or black however you'd like to say it sometimes i still wrestle with my own identity I, I i i can't lie to you do i call myself black yes but inevitably depending on the situation that i'm in there's always going to be a person that kind of hints or makes a face like oh you can't be completely black and then i have to explain well my mother's black and my father's yada 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 right so that's something when you're mixed it's a it's a it adds complications to your racial identity and the way that you perceive yourself. So it doesn't make me happy to say that. Now, at the beginning of this conversation, I said something that I think is very powerful and that should be understood by everybody. That blackness is not inferior. The state of having dark skin the state of having kinky hair, hair that is not straight, certain facial features that you may not see in uh, someone who uh, exhibits general Caucasian European features. That does not make you inferior in and of itself. So then you have to ask, why? If you're talking to me and you heard the way that I listed, I, I created that scale. Why did you make the scale that way? What, in your opinion, 
is the thing is the thing that makes whites at the high at the top of that scale and blacks at the bottom of that scale what makes you say that your own people a race that you belong to deserves to be at the bottom of that scale and that's a heavy one that's a heavy punch the word deserves that's a heavy one hits you right in the gut right in the heart if we remember I'm not going to choke up if we remember the thing How is respect earned in the long run? What is the thing that makes you respect someone and by extension, others of that race? And to go one further, everyone else who belongs to that race. What makes you respect them in the long run? If we've established that looks don't really matter in the grand scheme of things, they, all, they will always play a part. Because as human beings, I think that it's just in us to discriminate. It's in us to segregate. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just something that is inherent to the animal kingdom. That we're just programmed to discriminate and segregate and decide that this group of people is greater than and this group of people is less than. And as a result, I'm going to treat this group of people one way and this group of people another way. I'm going to grant access more often to, 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 to pleasurable things, to desirable things, to I'm going to share favorable things more often to this group of people and really think a little bit harder if I really want to do the same to this other group of people. I think it's in us to do that as animals. Because make no mistake, despite the fact that we've developed technology and we've developed complex societies, at the end of the day, we are very much nothing more than animals. We're not so intelligent and so cultured that our base instincts don't play a role in the way that the world is run by us and the way that we rule the world. If that is true, if my societal perspective totem pole is true, I believe it is, unfortunately. Doesn't make me feel good, doesn't make me happy, but to me it's true. Generally speaking, on a respect scale, you got whites, Asians, Hispanics, and blacks. Why is my people labeled last? If you were to guess, why would that be? I would say it's because from a global perspective, again, we're imagining that we're not from the country that we're from. We're imagining that we are the world. The social perspective, the, 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 the social vision that we have is a global one. I would argue that most people are advertised because advertising plays a great role in everything that happens in this world. Everything is advertised to you from the news to television shows to 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 excuse me, uh, breaking current events, everything, advertising has a place in everything. And what is advertising? Advertising is, is the method. It's the, the way, it's the skill to manipulate people's emotions, to convince them that they should want something. Not necessarily to get them to realize that they need something, but to get them to think that they want something, that they desire something, that they need something. Not, 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 not advertising is very nefarious. It's a nefarious world. It's a shady world. Much like most other worlds that exist to, to, to tweak and mess with the way that you think. I would argue that globally, most cultures and most societies are advertised the fact that Black people are generally more ignorant, 
less cultured and that whatever culture exists because you could argue that black american culture is really the most important black culture that exists around the world when people think about what black people want and what black people like and what kind of black person i want to be like around the world people don't i would argue that people don't go to the internet and look up some kind of french black guy they don't look up a they don't search some nigerian black guy they look for american black guys american black culture dominates i would argue dominates the global perspective on black people as a whole regardless of where you're from and even black people in other places black men from other countries aspire to be like successful black men from america so american black culture is really the root of where global societal perspective is built and what is advertised what may be advertised to not only americans but the rest of the world as far as a general perspective on what black people are like not that this is true but how are we advertised we're generally advertised i would argue like i said as being less intelligent less cultured um more ignorant more prone to violence very impulsive very lack with lacking foresight and that we idolize we idolize superficial qualities in the world around us more than anything that could truly elevate our people that could truly elevate ourselves american black culture is very superficial generally speaking if we're being honest that's the point of a video like this is to be honest if i'm wrong tell me comment tell me that i'm wrong tell me that i have it all wrong i accept that i'm not right a lot of the time i would like to think that i've grown up into a man who will accept if i'm truly not right about something i'll admit it and not only will i admit it but i'll take time and seriously think about why i ever believed something in the first place that was wrong why did i believe it because sometimes that's the thing about life is that you sit down and sometimes you realize that something that you believe that you thought was true was actually not so then where did that come from where did the idea that that somehow that exists in my mind how did it ever get placed there what happened when did it happen and why did i allow it to remain the thing about racial perception is that it's greatly dependent on advertising and the thing about advertising is that it has a really bad way of lumping people together so if you go on reddit or you go on twitter and you see a video let's say you see one video of a mob of black people just dressed not dressed to make themselves presentable their pants are sagging below their waists they're 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 wearing slippers you know their hair is not you know made up in any kind of presentable fashion and you see the this mob of black people just fighting for arbitrary reasons right for trivial reasons reasons that don't even matter and then the way that they're speaking they're speaking in some you know in a dialect that you dude 
you guys aren't speaking proper English. Jesus, these people must be, what the heck is going on? So that's what you see. And then you see another video like that. And these videos are from America. And then you see another video like that, and another one, and another one, and suddenly your feed, or whatever subreddit you're following, you, you, you kind of realize, wow, a lot of these videos of black people from America, they tend to act in undesirable ways, ways that I don't really want to be associated with. It's entertaining. Definitely gets likes and views because it makes us laugh. He, 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 ha, ha, ha. Or it makes us go, ooh, jeez, man. But those aren't the kind of people that I want to represent my race. And that's not even something, that's not a statement that happens like consciously. It's something that happens subconsciously. It's like, I really wouldn't want people who behave like that to be in my circle. Nah, not really. We'll just let them do that. They're entertaining us. It's, it's funny. But I don't really want to be like that. And I don't want people around me to be like that. Because if we're honest, nobody really does. There should be a great shame, regardless of the way that you look, regardless of the color of your skin, regardless of the state of your hair, or any of that nonsense. There should be a great shame in acting in ways that make other people determine that you're undesirable. Determine, there should be a great shame in acting in ways that make people look at you and go, yeah, I, I don't respect that person. But for whatever reason, we don't have that in, in American black culture. We act in ways we call them ratchet or ghetto or ignorant or outrageous. We act in ways on social media, in these videos on social media, or, you know, you, depending on where you live, we act in specific ways that other races are not generally prone to act that, or that people believe through the advertising that they see on social media and on television and whatever, that people believe that are more likely to be demonstrated by black Americans. And sometimes it happens and we just don't care. We just don't care. I'm going to act ratchet, ghetto, outrageous, whatever, insensitive. And I'm not apologizing to anybody for it. I don't need to. And then it goes even one step further. And this is a problem with, with black culture that I, I will, um, it's a hill that I'm going to, I will die on. Oftentimes, black culture is not very accountable. That's a hill I'm willing to die on. That's something that I can say with absolute fact, that, that I believe is an absolute fact. Black culture is not accountable because it's, 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 built from bricks of resentment it's built from bricks of anger the discrimination of the black man in america has a rich history a sad history a tragic history one that will never be forgotten one that i don't think you could forget even if you tried and that you shouldn't i don't think it should ever be forgotten But I don't think that it should be used as an excuse to behave in undesirable ways. I also believe that to be true. So black culture is American black culture. Is built from bricks of anger, of resentment, of rage, of, of revenge, vengeance. There's a get back to black American culture that exists. It's this underlying get back. And sometimes it's, sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's overt. Sometimes it's apparent, depending on how black, not black, how black, depending on how uh, upset a black person may, may become, a black American may become. Sometimes you'll, see, you'll, you'll hear it. It'll come up. 40 acres and a mule and all that stuff. There's merit to it. That's another conversation entirely. Because that, that in itself has a lot of nuance. It's not a simple conversation. It's not a simple thing to, to, to come to conclusions about. All of these things are not simple concepts. Race relations in general, they're not simple. It's not 
it is simple, but it's not. It's very, it's, 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 it's seeped in nuance. To a person like me, I honestly believe a lot of this stuff is simple. But because I really do, I really think that all this stuff is very simple. But not everybody thinks the way I do. And as the world should be, everybody shouldn't think the way that I do. But I think that if more people were honest about the world that we live in and the ways in which we behave and the motivations that exist, that, that inspire our behaviors, and I think if more people really just sat down and thought a little bit more, I think this world would be a much better place for everybody. And especially for black Americans. But the point of this video, the thing that I said at first, is that be, is blackness is not inferior. And that is true. Being black, having dark skin, a specific style of hair, whatever style you want to say can be uh, associated with blackness. Certain facial features, certain body type. The way that you look never inherently makes a human being inferior. It does not. We're taught to believe that way because looks do play a large role in society. We're taught from very young ages that certain things are beautiful, that certain things are ugly, that certain things are desirable, that certain things are not so desirable. And it's generally based on what? Visual cues, visual signals, how we visually interpret things. But you have to learn. You have to learn complexity. Martin Luther King said it best. And I'm sorry, I may butch this quote because I haven't heard it in forever. But he said, you shouldn't judge a person based on the color of their skin, but on the content of their character. I think that's verbatim. I could be wrong. That right there, that right there is the absolute truth in the long run, in the grand scheme of things. Now, the way that we perceive race, the way that we treat people based on their race, unfortunately, a lot of those things are never going to change. Why? Because many of us ourselves are going to refuse to change. And we're not only are we going to refuse to change, but we're going to refuse to come together. And work together. There's a lot more that I could talk about and that I do want to talk about, but I think I've talked for way too long already. I don't keep a clock. I don't keep a timer on how long. I really should um, because otherwise I'll just talk and talk and talk. But I think the main point that I want to make is that regardless, regardless of the way that the world may view a specific race of people, regardless of the way that we ourselves end up being subliminally and sometimes overtly influenced by media, by different cultural things, regardless of the way that's given to us and taught to us and implanted in our brains, we have to step back and do a little bit of thinking and understand that the way that you look does not determine worth, not in the grand scheme of things. This the darkness of the skin on my hand does not make me greater than, and it does not make me less than. There's always going to be, if, if you want to turn this conversation towards sexuality, 
There's all, that's another conversation in itself. Some people may find the darkness of my skin more desirable than lightness. Some people may find light skin more desirable than, than, than darker skin. In some ways, you can't help that because that's a nature versus nurture thing. It's, it's, it's another conversation. But regardless, even, even then, even if we're talking about sexual preferences, a person can still, with a little bit of thought, a little bit of meditation, and a little bit of honesty, despite preferences, a person can still understand that a human being's worth is not determined based on their appearance. And respect is not something that should be given or evaluated or however you want to say it based on a person's race. A man's behavior means everything. And I'm going to say that again. A man's behavior means everything. And don't, don't get it twisted. I do understand the world that I live in. I do understand that certain things quite possibly are never going to change, at least not in my lifetime. Racism, social discrimination, all, all these things, they're not going to go away. The way that... Oh, things finished, things finished charging. The way that... Oh, that was a notification, not a charging thing. Okay, whatever. Technology sometimes twists me out sometimes. But... um. There are, I do understand the, the state of the world. I do understand that I don't live in some kind of um, utopia, okay? I'm, I'm not, I'm only an idealist to an extent. I think that the best way for a human being to be is for a human being to balance the idealistic part of themselves while also never losing hold of the realist that should be cultivated in most human beings. You have to have a healthy balance of both. Otherwise, you become, if you're too much of a realist, you stand, you stand to become just utterly depressed by the horrendous state of the world that we live in. The world is a dark, dark place. It's not very nice. And if you're too much of a realist, then you'll never, you'll never even be motivated to find solutions to, trying to try to change the horrible state of the world. You just doom yourself into becoming a person who's just always a Debbie Downer. Oh, there's no point to changing anything because the world is rotten. People suck. We all, we're all going to burn. Everyone dies, so none of this matters anyway. The human race is going to go extinct eventually, so nothing matters. That's what happens when you're too much of a realist. And then when you're too much of an idealist, on the other hand, you become delusional. <laughs> Absolutely delusional. Because reality has, left, has been left behind somewhere. You left it on the other side of the rainbow. <laughs> it's gone. So, in order to not be delusional, and in order to not become too depressed, you have to develop a healthy balance of the two. You always should have idealistic principles in your mind. But by definition... You should, your, your psychological state should always be rooted in realism. In my opinion, that's the best way to be. And maybe I didn't communicate because race relations, race is a very sensitive topic. And I, I didn't make this video to try to put down black Americans, to try to put down my own people and by extension myself. I, I, that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is supposed to emphasize that blackness is not inferior. 